So dear friends, welcome to this edition of Shepherd's Voice. I'm happy to speak to you. I'm happy to share some things about the diocese, the happenings in the country and also in the world. First of all, take care of your health. Corona is supposed to be on the fading side, but don't take it for granted. Even in our churches, even in our places of worship, we have been trying to be as careful as possible. We follow the directives of the government, which tells us how many people can gather and what is the procedures, etc. We shall try to keep them as much as possible. First of all, now let me begin with what's called Holy Childhood. Holy Childhood. You know, it's a vow to be a child, to be once again a child. It's not possible. Childhood is something special. Childhood is something that you just can't repeat it once again. Perhaps that's why our national poet, Rabindranath Tagore, beautifully put it and said that every child comes with the message that God is not yet discouraged of mankind. The children are always special. Their smiles lights up our day. Their little things of their life, even their mischief, perhaps gives us something to not only to smile, but also endear ourselves to the children much more. So what's Holy Childhood? <clears throat> You know, the year, in the year, the church takes up one day and keeps it very specially for the children, Holy Childhood. This year it falls on this Sunday that we are celebrating and in our Archdiocese we will be surely praying for the children in a very special way. You know, the innocence of the children can never be disturbed. So that is why we get more and more directives these days as to how to treat the children and to abuse the children is the, one of the biggest crimes, is one of the biggest crimes. I'm sure we will not be part of it. And so the children and especially this day is celebrated for the sake of those children who have no support, who are perhaps wanting something more, what they can have. You know, the Holy Childhood Day was started by a lady, a girl named Pauline Jericot. She was something special. She was a poor girl. With seven members or seven children in her family. Her father worked as a silk factory man and not only thinking about herself, she starts thinking of the children of the other silk factory workers. And that's how she starts this movement, what's called children helping children. The children themselves can help the children. And so in that sense, this association helps many, many children all over the world, especially those who have been unfortunate they have no parents. Perhaps having parents, they are still in a situation where they can not help themselves. So my dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, let us remember the children. It's not enough that we make a collection and we also encourage the children to make the collections because it's the children who are helping the children. But the children can also be part of many other things in life. You know, the missions, and very often we say, the missionary work is at the heart of the children's attitude, spontaneity, always wanting to move in a positive way and trusting in God. Teach the children to pray. The Holy Childhood Association in our diocese, which is being taken care of by Father Susan Nathan, is also adapting two other things in order to encourage our children. One is the adoration, the Eucharistic adoration of children. It's so beautiful to see the children praying. 
and i think they have the sense of holiness much more than we elders we elders i had a beautiful picture of a child in my room you know the way she closes her eyes the way the eyelashes as it were they are so alive but then the mind and the heart is for god children teach us to pray the second thing which father susan adan encourages is what's called the fatima movement you know the children of fatima innocent as they were were always trusting in god and so the rosary which is just sort of a, a poor man's prayer is something special for the children and so my dear children i wish you well and surely the holy child today may it be a meaningful day as you make collections in the parish as you arrange organize some programs for the children and especially teach the children to pray at home and in the church let me speak about the catechism this sunday is going to be celebrated also the catechism day catechism is something special catechism is giving the children knowledge the experience of god and it is always a great experience you know i repeated it two or three times earlier the holy father pope francis he remembered and said that my holy communion catechism was taught to me by my grandmother she put me on my lap and she taught me the catechism how beautiful it is and the catechism taught by our parents that comes from the heart they may not say many words and give big sermons but the children are watching and that's the biggest catechism in kannada we have that beautiful saying manaya modala paata shale home is the first school and especially for religion so this sunday which we will celebrate as a catechism sunday with a special mass at 9 o'clock and in this mass we will pray for the children and also continue with the catechism program which our department of our commission for catechism or catechetics will conduct father jur santosh who is the secretary of this commission has taken a lot of trouble to see that though there was not much of physical catechism this year to do it online and also the exams have been conducted and the children that have participated and perhaps done well will surely be given a certificate and a uh, recognition of their merits but it's much more catechism is a study of life and therefore my dear parents i am sure that next year we will can have physical catechism and i am grateful to all my parish priests all the religious all the sisters all the teachers and all the parents who take catechism for the children this is an investment that you will reap long long after the children are grown up and therefore i will i ask you to participate in these catechetical celebrations of our archdiocese also prepare yourself so that the catechism is not just an academic subject that you learn and learn by heart and get some marks but a catechism is something that teaches you for life you remember the beautiful scene of jesus himself when he was 12 years old he preferred not to go with his parents perhaps there were so many good things he could have gone to the roadshed shops or perhaps he could have eaten many things but he preferred to stay in the temple he preferred to stay there and to discuss and to talk and perhaps there's a beautiful comment made that he was discussing with the elders which means much more than catechism so my dear children i wish you a holy catechism day along with your parents teachers and our commission for catechetics so my dear friends now let me take you to 11th of february which is a very special day for the whole church it's the day that we celebrate 
as the feast of our lady of lords and since 30 years pope john paul ii who is now a saint who suffered much in his last days established this as a day of prayer a day of caring for the sick and therefore the 11th of february every year is kept up as the day of the sick it's very special you know our lady of lords when you see this grottoes in all our churches it's a silence presence of our lady in our life in our sufferings in our cure and perhaps even if it is there is no cure to say that our mother is with us and so what's special about this day the holy father pope francis has given a special theme today be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful that's the quotation from gospel of luke chapter 6 verse 36 and it means much a small sentence in the bible speaks much first of all be merciful you know nobody wants to be sick nobody wants to go to sleep nobody wants to take medicines but this is a condition that is inevitable for many of us we have seen how many people have suffered in this two last two years in the corona period how many people we have lost how many of our priests religious how many of our family members we have lost and there are others perhaps who are still recovering and the effects of these medicines go long long way and so the day of the sick may be merciful to them give them company understand them today i am okay today i can speak to you i can perhaps even make noise and say that i am okay today but i could be sick and perhaps a day will come when i will also need the help of the others and this, the holy father takes us a little more and says that uh, especially the ones who are taking care of the sick the holy father says touching the wounded body of christ you know when a person gets wounds when a person meets with an accident you see the raw flesh you see the blood that is bleeding there and the holy father says you doctors nurses health personnel are the ones who touch the body of christ touch the body of christ you are donning an important role and so this patient in front of you is a very special one it's not just a bed number that you give and there's one but it's a special person and in every person of the sick that you come across you meet once again christ in your life and so the holy father says let us pray very specially for those that are taking care of our sick it's not an easy job many of them perhaps have their own families many of them have their own fears something could happen to us in this corona season we know that how contagious it is and they have children they have families and it's a frightful situation for them and many of them perhaps they have to have a sleepless night they have to keep awake and our doctors they have to study much and more in a way to give to the others so this is a day of prayer very specially for us and dedicated also to mother mary those of you who have been to lourdes i'm sure it's a very very a spiritual experience you know those waters that are flowing there to say that these waters which meant nothing suddenly become have become the waters of cure and so many people who go to lourdes and even in our own country pray at the grotto of lourdes have been healed have a experience a spiritual well being and maybe there are some who are not healed but then to accept that god is with us to accept that when i am sick my mother is with us that's a great experience and therefore we take mother mary along with this day of the sick on 11th of february which you will celebrate very specially in our diocese in our diocese we have opened a a clinic in a very remote area of kgf that's called suzepalia and we have named it as st joseph health care center and on this day on the 11th of february 
i shall be officially sort of asking them to start their work because we had been waiting for the permissions from the government and now that we are about to obtain it on 11th of february the day of the sick we will also open our doors of our health clinic to the sick especially of in kgf we pray for us and we also request you to help us in support us in whatever way possible i am very much impressed that bangalore people have always a big heart when it was the case of the corona we asked for help and support it was much more than we expected which means that perhaps bangalore as i said is not only a city of it and bt it's a city of humanity it's a city of the heart and therefore let us move forward helping the sick and praying for them very specially on 11th of february so my dear friends father cyril victor the director of our archdiocese and communication center last time in a small clip he said that perhaps if you have any questions you can ask the bishop and he may try to answer he made a big announcement i don't know how much i can answer or rather how much i can satisfy giving answers to your questions but surely i will try there's a nice question that has come this with day week is in the context of last time i spoke about the lectors and the catechists the holy father on the 23rd of january on the day of the word of god instituted these two ministries the ministry of lector and the ministry of catechists and the ministry means an officially giving authority in order to do this ministry the ministry of lector means the ministry of reading or proclaiming the gospel proclaiming the readings proclaiming the word of god and that's called lector and that's an official function in the church and the second one is the catechists the ones who can catechize the ones who can convey the message of god the good news of god to the others and this is also an official ministry so the question that is asked of me is uh, i thank the person who has asked this question and uh, surely i would i would not mind telling the names but then you should not be embarrassed that's why i don't mention the names but then a question is the good one and the question is why is there no training for lectors and catechists a good question something you are asking me very difficult one why is there no training for the lectors and catechists in our diocese first of all i would say that you know in general there are many in our churches who are reading reading well and they may not be endowed with that ministry of lector which the holy father has requested us to make use of it in our own diocese so also the catechists as regards the lectors though we have not formally instituted the ministry of lector perhaps we will do it soon there are some training places there are some training courses and some of our parish which themselves they collect the lectors together and give them a very special training you know i have been saying that the ministry of lector is not just reading it's not just reading you, you know in our uh, tv programs or perhaps radio programs you find people reading they have a good diction they have a good this one lector is much more than that lector means to proclaim the word of god to proclaim the word of god that means make every person listen to the word of god and to keep it in our heart there's a beautiful saying in the in the gospel of Luke chapter 2 was i think 19 and 52 where it is said mary kept these words in her heart and pondered over them this is the fruit of the proclamation and therefore this small trainings are taking place already in the diocese and at the diocese level our liturgy committee will surely be requested to have a lectors training so that they can be part of the movement to proclaim the gospel to proclaim the word of god as regards the catechists as i said catechism day a day wherein we bring the teachers and the students together 
it is also happening in our diocese and catechists though we have not formally instituted the ministry of catechist which once again we shall do it but there are courses there are training programs that are taking place in our archdiocese especially for our teachers i must say that our teachers are very talented our teachers are very gifted and perhaps the teachers who come much more from the families with their own children with their own backgrounds they are the best catechists so therefore there are some training programs in case you would like to attend any of our teachers training programs especially for catechism teachers we will surely welcome you i am sure if you have any more questions kindly send it to father cyril on the on the link that he has given and i shall try to satisfy you with my answers if it is possible god bless you